Oh my god, is chat working? I'm gonna lose it! I just have to adjust the sound effects you're driving me nuts. Oh, chat is still not working. Are you, are you kidding me? <sighs> Let me just say... Streamlabs is really not failing to disappoint me. Clear chat. Pause chat. Hmm. Nope, that didn't work. Guess chat's just never gonna work again. I'm straight up gonna reinstall Streamlabs tomorrow. Alrighty. Then let me grab the chat off of Twitch. Delicious pop out chat. Eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Pop out. Alrighty. So, where did we leave off? Um, we left off... Golly gee. Uh, we finished up all of the short episodes. Um, I was having difficulties getting that... King's Picture Book achievement, which I managed to get literally as soon as I turned the stream off. Um... So, I did get that achievement. Um, trying to think what else. Um, so we are left with having to complete the last few gallery pictures, which, as far as I know, is done by doing the radio sessions. Um, and then apparently there's one more episode? But I don't know where to find it. Because it ain't here. Because it's called After After. And it's not... Not here. I mean... None of these are it. Hmm. I don't know. But yeah. And I did do some research because I was confused about some of the plot points of the story, which I will go over... Um, basically, I was confused about why, um, Kazuaki Nanaki, um, was so energetic <laughs> as, as opposed to in, in the game, he was very sleepy. And see, I haven't played Had a Full Boyfriend for like five years, so I completely forgot that there was a major part of the plot uh, involving Nagaki, Hitori, um, Kazuaki Nanaki, uh, and Shu Iwamine. So I'll quick explain. Basically, the reason Nanaki was suddenly so energetic as opposed to sleepy is because we were watching uh, the secret episodes at the end are assuming that everyone is alive. And there were people that died in the true ending of Had a Full Boyfriend. And that is the canon that Holiday Star goes after. But in the special episodes, it's not canon. They're alive. So, what happened with this whole bird-human terrorism um, is that Nagaki 
and Hitori, the darker bird that I kept saying I um, wanted Nanaki to marry, um, Nagaki and Hitori were brothers, and they were in an orphanage, and they were in this orphanage that was attacked. And then afterward, Hitori goes and gets a job, and Nagaki gets chosen to participate in these different experiments with birds and humans. Nagaki is basically like turned into this guinea pig. He gets super depressed. He sets the lab on fire. That's how Nagaki dies in the fire. Um, Shu Iwamine is the doctor that did all of this. Uh, so that's how he's connected. Um, I don't remember quite why but Hitori decides he's going to work at the school, I guess maybe to get close to Shu. Um, and he gets close to Nanaki, who was very depressed and everything. And that's, Nanaki is the king. The original Nanaki is the king. He gets close to Nanaki, um, convinces him to go into the forest, drugs him and kills him. And then he bleaches his feathers and takes Nanaki's place. So Hitori is the one who has the narcolepsy, who's sleepy all the time, and Nanaki is the one who's like a crybaby, but Nanaki is dead. And Hitori takes his place and pretends to be him. So that's why um, when Nanaki gets stuck in the Holiday Star, um, he's like, oh, that's not actually my name, it's not Nanaki. And then they find out that his name is Hitori because they're basically like revealing that his dark secret, because everyone had their dark secret, his dark secret is that he killed Nanaki and he took his life over and that he's really Hitori. Um, and that's why Nanaki, the king, Nanaki, is so... Um, upset whenever Nagaki comes near him because Nagaki is the reason that basically Hitori went bad and then killed him and took over his life and all that stuff. So because I didn't play How to Full Boyfriend for a very long time, I didn't realize all of this and it probably would have had more of an impact on me if I had realized, oh, the king is Nanaki and he's getting revenge on Hitori and Nagaki for what happened to him. Um, and then basically, like, his soul was able to be free once he left the Holiday Star. But, so the special episode, it pretends that all of them are still alive, Nagaki is still alive, Nanaki is still alive, Hitori's not evil, he's still alive. Um, and that was why I was very confused. So, yeah, they, they were acting different because Nanaki is not a narcoleptic person. Hitori is. Hitori as Nanaki is. So that was just interesting. Um, but I was like reading the How to Full Boyfriend wiki last night, like, what? I don't understand. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm dumb, dumb. Um, but so you can even see if you look at, oh, the king's pictures aren't unlocked yet. The king's picture is supposed to be like down here or here. And when that's unlocked, it will show that he looks just like Nanaki, the original Nanaki, the human Nanaki that we saw when we played the special episodes yesterday. So that being said, that's your little history lesson. And I just spoiled most of How to Full Boyfriend for you uh, if you haven't played it. Although if you haven't played it, is it really spoilers anymore? I mean, the game came out like six years ago. Um, so moving right along. We are going to complete the last three achievements and be done with this game. Be gone! <sighs> the how and why of St. Pigeon Nation's question box. Hi, everybody. I'm Kawara Ryota, a rock dove from 2-3. I seem to be in charge of the question corner. I think you all can tell what we're doing here just from the name, but since it's the first time, I'll explain. In the how and why question box, I'll be answering letters you've all sent in. 
Not just questions, though. It looks like we'll be doing shout-outs, random assigns, all sorts of things. It'll be pretty relaxed. Bear with us, because this is the first time I've made sure to pick things which don't spoil any of the bad boys' love route from the full version. If you haven't finished yet, spoiler landmines can be scary. But don't worry, there won't be any of those here. Let's get started then. Now, for our very first letter from one aviophile. This is a historic moment, everybody. If you get married to Hyoko, you'll be the one wearing the wedding dress, right, Ryota? Right? So Hyoko is uh, the name of the main character. Like, you know how um, Red and Blue and uh, Leaf, uh, they all have like official names in Pokemon. Um, that's like her official name. If you don't um, name the character after you, it'll be Hyoko Tosaka. You seem awfully sure about this. Um, actually, Hyoko told me a little about her dream wedding a long time ago. She said she wanted a bungee jump wedding. I can't remember where, but apparently there's a place where you can have the entire ceremony while oscillating several meters above the ground. If she still wants to have a bungee wedding, a dress would be risky for either of us. It would be nice if we could wear our street clothes. <laughs> Hello, he's not objecting to the dress, he's just objecting to the dress while bungee jumping. We love a reasonable man. <laughs> Anyway, next letter. This one is from a Miss Bird Love. Let's see. Did birds' lifespans change at all when they were ascended? I don't know what life expectancies were like before, but some have increased over the past 100 years or so. Larger parrots and things were always long-lived, and so didn't change much. But smaller birds like quails and things, live several times as long now. Doves still have much shorter lives than humans, though. That's just how it is. Oh, sorry. We're getting gloomy already. Let me change course a little. Let's regroup and move on to the next letter. If I have to do this voice for the next two hours, I'm going to shit myself. This one is from Kanako Mikan. To Hyoko, nice to meet you. I have lost my heart to your wild lifestyle. Being a hunter-gatherer must be hard in a lot of ways. Have you ever had trouble with some particular animal or had to live through something really difficult? Oh my goodness. I was told to answer anything for Hyoko as best as I could. Um... Hyoko's really something. She's been wild and rugged ever since we were young. I've always admired her, too. She never really complains, so I'm not sure I know of anything that's really given her trouble. The one thing I can think of would be the time her den got hijacked. Once, her house got invaded by a bunch of jackals while she was at school. It looked really tough. As long as there are living creatures, there will always be turf wars. She said the fight with the boss jackal lent an entirely new meaning to the phrase domestic violence, so maybe that's a good example of a quarry which gave her trouble as well. Then again, they reconciled and she was welcomed into the jackal tribe as a brother, so maybe it was more like a pair of Yankees having a sunset fistfight on the riverbank than a hunter and her prey. The next letter is addressed to Nagaki. From one Atoful Karis. What do you wish for on Tanabata? I always felt sad not seeing your card. I think we should have him answer this himself. Nageki, 
Nagaki, are you here? What? Oh, good. I was worried I'd have to call you on the announcements. Is that microphone on? Yup, we're on the air right now. Wait, don't leave yet. <laughs> no, I don't want to be recorded. Just answer one question, please. Fine. But once I've answered, I'm leaving. Thank you. This letter was asking if you make wishes on Tanabata. I'd like to know what you wish for, too. I don't. Wishes are for stupid, stup stupid stitious. Wishes are for stupid stitious children. Dr. Oh. Dr. Iwamine always makes one. Oh, did you make them when you were younger? Yes. What sort of things did you wish for back then? Nothing. Nothing special. Things like, I hope my family stays happy. Harmless things like that. I'm always hoping for the same thing. I know how it is. Are we done? I'm leaving. Oh, yes. Sorry for holding you up. See you. Right. Oh, and I do know that the YouTube VOD did not go up last night. That was because my computer decided to corrupt its boot files. Um, I didn't even know if I was having the stream tonight. Um, but I fixed that, so I will be uploading all the VODs tonight that did not get uploaded. So the YouTube VOD... Oh wait, I did do the Twitch VOD. So yeah, the YouTube VOD, and then the two VODs that will be posted from this one. He really cares about his family. I wonder what they're like. They must be all quiet, calm birds like him. The next one is for San. It isn't signed. It's a little long, but I'll try and read it in one go. Oko-san, 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 Oko-san. Ah, if, 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 sniff, sniff, smells good. If, ah, uh, I want to, if, if, Okotan's polar, pure white plumage, if, if, ah. Wait, no, not if, if, mofu, 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 crunchy, crunchy, mofu, mofu, ah, ah, my heart, best, I feel like this is like, this is like X-rated, but for birds. Festival Oko-san, so cute. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Oko-san's voice is decided. Yay, ah, cute, cute, too cute. Oko-san, ah. I'm so glad the drama CDs are going to be so, no, wait, this can't be. Gah, the drama CDs are, are not real. Wait, the games aren't real either? Oko-san is not real? Ah! No! No! Wa! Koo! <laughs> Koo! I can't even do Ryota's voice while reading this. No, darn it, I'm quitting. I'm quitting reality. Wait, he's looking at me? Oko-san in my monitor is looking at me? Hi, Elena. <laughs> no weirdness going on right now. He's looking at me. He's looking at me. The Oko-san on the blog is looking at me. Hey, this. he's talking to me. In the game. Thank Puri. I'm glad I'm still here. Yay! I have Oko-san. I did it. I did it, Louise. Could that be done alone? Ah, the drama CD Oko-san. <laughs> Angel, Ryota, Sakuya, Yuya, 
Ah, wah! Deliver my love to Oko-san. Deliver it to him at St. Pidgeon Nations. Ah, I felt like I was going to suffocate reading that letter. Coo! It has been delivered! Coo coo! Your love has been delivered! Coo! Will you accompany Oko-san on a journey? True pudding awaits! I think he understands. That's good. On that last note, let's get rid of this and burn it forever. This last letter here is for San as well. From one Ori. I love Oko-san too much, and my heart is turning into a Hato heart. Is it easy to keep doves at home? I want an Oko-san all of my own, to stroke gently and around and around. My goal is to have him ride on my shoulder. I know it isn't a casual decision, but do you think I could do that? No one around here has kept doves for some decades. The pet shop does not sell them either. Where did Oko-san come from? It is a mystery. Would you terribly mind telling me? Um, I think I should start by talking about San's actor. This will get a bit meta. San is modeled off of a dove named Oko-san, kept by the creator. Of course, his portrait is a picture of the bird himself. In reality, he isn't interested in pudding at all. Please don't try to feed a dove pudding. Doves aren't particularly hard to care for. Anyone who's kept a budgie or sparrow or anything should find it pretty easy. A racing bird would be a little more difficult, but for a fantail or the like, a fairly small cage is fine. A rabbit cage works very well. However, doves aren't very common pets, so there aren't many veterinarians who know how to treat them. Doves are usually very healthy and rarely get sick, but you might want to make sure there's a clinic nearby which will receive them just in case. They're not common in general pet stores, but there's usually a section for doves in places that specialize in birds. Have a look around. Whoa! I feel like I was just talking about another universe where birds aren't the dominant species. It's almost like I was possessed for a second. <laughs> Good luck, Miss Ori. I hope you can have a wonderful birdie life. That's all for today. Thank you all for sending us letters. Achievement unlocked. Radio chick. All right, the pigeon and the partridge. Oh, great, I am going to have to do this voice for two hours. Oh, let me take a sip of my coffee. Mm. Oh. Take me back to my happy place. ZD in the microwave in, in just a few hours. ZD in the microwave in just a few hours. <clears throat> the how and why of St. Pidgeon Nations? Question box. Hello, everybody. This is Kawara Ryota from Class 2-3. It's time for the second round of the Question Corner. Independent programs like this don't have to worry about viewer numbers, so we can take it easy. It's very relaxing. Aren't you feeling relaxed? Anyway, this episode will mostly be spoiler-free as well. Spoilers for the Bad Boys Love Route will probably start showing up in the second half, I think? Well, I already spoiled the whole route in the first five minutes of the stream, so it's fine. <laughs> At any rate, everyone can listen to this without worrying. Let's start looking at letters. This time, there are three for me. First off, one from an anonymous individual. You look very good in girls' clothes, but how do you feel about cross-dressing? Is getting paid just an excuse? How do I feel? I'm not sure. I only ever cross-dress at work, after all. It would be sort of like if I worked at the convenience store and put on some sort of emotional weight into the act of wearing the apron or something. It would be very strange. And as for it being an excuse, well, that seems odd, too. It's just a normal part of life to me. On to the second letter. This one is from Areko. <clears throat> 
I want to have Cooleen be my personal maid. Cooleen was like the, um, the person that uh, he would dress up as at his one job where he worked at like a restaurant or a host cafe or something. So like instead of Colleen, it was Cooleen because he's a bird. <laughs> There is a time limit, but you can ask for me any time you're at the cafe. I'll be waiting. And now for the third, from Cooleen Sexual. <clears throat> I wonder if that's the person who comes by every Friday. To Cooleen, you're always so cute. What kind of clothes do you like? You can tell me, right? I'd like to see you in more than a maid and Miko clothes, too. Jesus, Ryota's got chasers! Like maybe a sailor uniform? Ha ha. Come again soon, master. I don't normally do this outside of the cafe, but I had them get me a sailor uniform for this, so I'll be back in a minute. Oh, yes. Ah! <laughs> He's so cute! Oh my god. Oh, every time Ryota dresses up, it just makes life worth it. This is why we were put on this planet. To look at birds in cute outfits. God. I need a bird. I tried making bento. Will you eat with me? This is the first time I've worn a sailor uniform, actually. It's a little drafty for this time of year, if you know what I mean. The next one is for Dr. Iwamine. Let's see if I can get him in here. What is it? Another stomach ache? Was last time's dose not enough? I do have something a little more powerful. Something that will make you feel so good that you just might die. I mean... Yeah, yeah, you'll die. It's poison. With a 42% chance of painful death as a side effect. <laughs> I called it. What? That's too much of a mortality rate. I'm not in enough of a hurry to play Russian roulette, you know. And, and don't go changing the background music like that. This is the question corner, doctor. There's a letter for you and me. May I read it to you? What foolishness is... Very well. We shall discuss the compensation later, of course. I probably don't want to know what you'll ask for, but thank you. It's from someone named Yulia, and it was sent on December 6th. Ryota's birthday is the 3rd, right? Happy birthday! And the doctor's is the 12th. So, happy birthday to him, too. Thank you, Yuya. This person seems quite well informed. May I ask you a favor? My birthday is the 7th. Could you celebrate for me? Just one congratulation from you would be better than Christmas and New Year's cards combined. Another December child. Happy birthday, Yuya. My birthday is in December, too. You should say something too, Doctor. Why? It is merely another year in their life. What reason is there to celebrate? The only reason there is to celebrate is if they're dead, because then I can experiment on them. Ah, uh, not that I had expected much from you anyway. All you think about is experimenting and making out with my father. Uh, I wish you wouldn't do either. I am sorry, Yuya. I'll congratulate you for the doctor as well. Happy birthday! <clears throat> Merry Christmas! I feel like something else just got slipped in there. A anyway, happy birthday. I hope you have a good year. If per oh, if perhaps you have a change of heart and decide you would like to have your limbs and organs replaced, do let me know. Ho 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 ho. Don't even joke about that sort of thing, Doctor. Um, seeing as the doctor's here, I'll read a few more of these. Some of these are love letters written by my father, so I'm just gonna 
throw them out. This one is a question for the doctor from Just Pudding. Do you have a CECOM alarm in the infirmary? Do you, doctor? No, I do not make a habit of relying on such establishments. I simply do not leave anything in there which would be troubling to have stolen. Use Gulgard, easy and safe. Um, I think not, Mr. Gulgard. The doctor doesn't seem interested. And that's where I hide. Pardon me, then. Please do call if you change your mind. Ah, he left his business card even though we didn't ask for it. I hate people like that. I don't have any use for it. What about you, doctor? <clears throat> Likewise. Yeah, really. Time for the last one. This one is from Helplessly in Love. Is this my dad writing a letter to you? I swear to Jesus. I am helplessly in love with round, adorable chew car partridges. Do all chew cars have the doctor's suspiciously fluffy face? What do you think, doctor? A foolish question. I was visiting a town for the first time. The first man I met had a round face. Does everyone in that town have a round face? Or something like that. It's from someone outside the school, so maybe you could answer less aggressively. Aggressive? Whatever do you mean? I believe I answered in a clear and concise fashion. There is no species of bird without individual differences. Um, this is hard. I suppose the doctor's right. There are differences between individuals. Maybe the best way to see it would be to go to the avian zoo in Kakegawa or Kobe. Chew car partridge's eyes aren't completely round, so they do look a little bit lethargic or maybe suspicious. Also, when they hold their heads out, their necks are surprisingly thin. They can look very vulnerable when they're taking dust baths, too. Do you take dust baths, doctor? What a quaint suggestion. Dust bathing is a behavior which arose as a way of removing parasites from the body. Our lifestyles have progressed such that we no longer come in contact with parasites, and so it is no longer needed. I do love to eat some dust, though. You must do it every once in a while, then. A defenseless, dust bathing Dr. Iwamine a fascinating idea, if only because of how hard my father would be thinking about it. <laughs> I think I'd like to see it. <sighs> Curiosity killed the cat. Yes, yes, I know. Is that enough? I believe the material from last night's experiment will be ready soon, and I would very much like to go home. Yes, we're done. Sorry for holding you up. Thank you. Why is everybody so uncooperative? I hope I can have someone who will play along next time. Then again, there are so many letters for the doctor. I'll have to bring him back at some point. Maybe next time I should get him a present or something to butter him up beforehand. Oh, so, um... Uh... Elena's asking how I got my computer fixed. Basically, um, I found out that bootres DLL was the file in question that was corrupted. Um, typically, System File Checker, which is a tool built into Windows, and you run it in the command prompt, like in safe mode. Typically, System File Checker would fix it, but it was having trouble with repairing the file. So then I tried to rebuild the um, boot files. Uh, that wasn't working. I tried to, um, rebuild the operating system's image. Um, that didn't work either. It kept getting stuck. And I really thought I was going to have to reinstall Windows because I was like, if I can't repair the system image, this is, this is not going to work. The last thing I tried was check disk. It's C-H-K-D-S-K, -K, which is a tool for your hard drive. These are all run in the command prompt. 
Uh, it's a tool for your hard drive that checks every sector of your hard drive one by one. It takes forever. It took all night, especially because I have like a two terabyte hard drive. Um, and I also have a magnetic hard drive where it's on metal platters. So it takes longer to check each metal platter, but it checks and it does it in like five different stages. Um, it checks everything on the drive and it finds if there's bad sectors on the drive, like if there's platters in the computer that have been ruined or there's data that's corrupt, you might have an SSD. Um, an SSD drive is like basically like a giant flash drive in your computer and it goes a lot faster. Um, I have a magnetic hard drive for reasons. Um, I'm probably at some point going to get an SSD, but I, I just, there's, there's certain things I like about magnetic hard drives better, which not many people have that viewpoint. Most people are like, SSDs are the future. And I agree, they are the future, but for now I'm clinging to my magnetic hard drive. Um, but the biggest thing was checking for the bad sectors, um, like stage five took like four hours, I think. Um... The first stages took like an hour. The first four stages took like an hour. And then it was like four hours to check for bad sectors. And at that point, it was already like 3 a.m. So I just went to bed and left my computer on. And I guess it found some bad sectors and partitions on my hard drive. And so it either quarantined them or repaired them. Sometimes it just says we're not going to use this sector of the hard drive anymore. Sometimes it like uninstalls the files and reinstalls them. It just basically does whatever it has to do to get your hard drive running properly again, whether that be rewriting the files or just repairing the files or whatever. So yeah. Oh, Kyle, you're here. Um, so yeah, so... I actually didn't think it was going to work. I thought I was definitely going to have to completely reinstall Windows. But I came down this morning and it said it was done and I restarted my computer and it worked. Oh yeah, it was, it was really annoying because I was like, I didn't, I, I mean even when I woke up, like today I woke up really late because I was up so late working on the computer. Um, so it kind of time sunk today, even though things are better now, it did time sink a little bit of today because I woke up so late after being so tired. So, but it's fixed now. Um, maybe next time I should get a present for him or something to butter him up beforehand. That's all, folks. Thank you for all the letters. Yes, and we're almost done, bird game. I am determined to finish it today. This is like the last thing we've got to do. Oh my god. Yes! Welcome to the Nishiki Koji special talk show. I get to do my Metaton voice. Good evening, folks. I am the grand artist who has offered his life, his very soul, up to the imagination, Nishiki Koji Tori. Welcome to our special time, which you shall spend with me. I don't imagine there are many listeners who don't already know it by heart, but allow me to give a brief introduction of my glorious, exemplary career so far. Once I was the ace of the 2nd Optical Ordnance Division of the Hawk Party Research Organization, and now I am a manager at the Crow Party, and also chief editor of the popular Golden Weekly Magazine. I doubt anyone in the world is as busy or as beautiful as I am. You are all incredibly grateful that I am taking this time out of my schedule to conduct a question and answer session, of course. Mr. Nishi Kikoji, Mr. Nishi Kikoji, please open the door. Bah! It won't open no matter how we push or pull. It must be locked from the inside. What do we do? At this rate, an entire chapter of the radio program is going to be overrun with some unfortunate golden pheasant disaster. You in there! Open up this instant! You were bad enough in the leguminantine short. Are you planning to ruin this too? 
Do you think an outsider like you will go unpunished for this? We won't stop at charges of trespassing, you hooligan. It is awfully loud out there. Would the peanut gallery mind keeping its fever gibberings to itself? Hm. This racket is in no way beautiful. Let me put on some music. Now then, let us begin my artistic question and answer session. This first one is from a young lad by the name of Hatomi is my waifu. When are you gonna discontinue Golden Dove? It's gotten really lame and just feels like he's run out of ideas with all the new characters he introduces. Hey, what? What is this? Do you know how long Mr. Takakishi Po labored in obscurity even after he made his debut in high school? Living the ignominious life of a non-serialized author. Even when he could get serialized positions, he was never popular in questionnaires, so he'd always be dropped. You cannot possibly comprehend how he suffered. And then he came to me, to Golden Weekly. He was the first artist whose serials worked out for me. We've struggled all this way together, like unfortunate twins joined at the hip, and so shamefully forced to run in every three-legged race ever. Do you have any idea how much sweat, how many tears, and how many of his own life blood he poured into the Golden Dove? You don't, do you? You know nothing of the joy of a long-running series, you disgusting Philistine. So don't just go talking about discontinuing it. Jeez. Ah. Uh, well then, next one. <laughs> Things sure seem lively in there. I wish he'd open the door already. On the contrary, he seems to be ignoring us entirely. I can't believe a disgrace like this is allowed on campus. It is most vexing. You two having trouble? The hero always- Does he have a gun? Jesus! The fucking music. <sighs> the hero always makes his appearance when everybody's in a pickle, right? Salutations, mon ami. You, yeah. No one asked for you to show up. Wait, what are you carrying? <laughs> I've got permission to force my way in. Gotta protect the peace and the tranquility of the campus after all. I'm gonna break this door down whether it's locked or not. Get back a little. Pew, 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 pew. The second one is from Testy Robin. I'm tired of the reversible dust jackets. Come up with a more interesting bonus or I'm not buying your magazine anymore. Then don't buy it! Why would we want readers as low-minded as you anyway? Don't you think something is wrong with this trend among publishers of trying to outcompete each other through bonus items? A magazine should be judged by what's inside. That's where the competition lies. Do not be fooled by those frivolities. The real artistry lies sparkling within. That's as far as you go, Nishikoji Tori. Yeehaw! Put your wings behind your head. What? What is a high school student doing with that thing? Didn't you know, mister? It's a must-have item for any fashionable teenage boy. At least in America. Oh shit, I'm getting political. We have you surrounded! Come quietly and don't try anything! Let's make this as nice as possible, shall we? I don't want to have to shoot you. Not very much, anyway. That rifle! Ah, uh, I see. So you're with JB. Ho oh, ho ho. Very well. I shall withdraw for today. But one day, this school shall be mine! Darn it. Here goes another window. <laughs> if you're going to go leaping out a window, at least open it first. Anyway, we've secured the broadcast room. We're short on time, so you should probably get started. Right. Thank you, Yuya. 
but where does he keep getting those things? Now then, let's try this again. The how and why of St. Pigeon Nations. Here's the question box. <clears throat> I'll be joining in today. This time we've got questions from Westerners. My English isn't very good, so Sakuya will be helping us out. Already in high school and you still can't use English? Your future is bleak indeed. I'm not planning to go overseas, so it won't be that bad. I hope. All right, first question. From one SSFXF17. That sounds more like a password than a handle. What is Hiyoko's favorite weapon? The board, the, the bow, the sword, or the spear? Can you answer that, Kawara? Hiyoko's favorite weapon? Well, a few years ago, she really liked the bamboo pole, but I think lately she's been using the copper sword more. A copper sword for hunting? Wouldn't it be a little dull for that? It doesn't cut very well, but she said it doesn't matter because she just bludgeons everything to death anyway. All right, let's keep this going. We're a little short on time, thanks to a certain someone. This one is for you, Sakuya. It's from Rabbit Doubt. Sakuya, please let me touch your feathers. I want to touch your feathers. Never! Hey, translate it to English first. Or Japanese, I guess, since this is the English release. I don't actually need you here at all, but if we started cutting whole characters out of scenes just because language barrier jokes don't really work, then things would get pretty confusing pretty quickly, right? Sakuya, please let me touch your feathers. I want to touch your feathers. Why should I let myself be touched by common riffraff? That's too bad, Rabbit Doubt. I want to touch his feathers too. He's so dreamy. Maybe he'll let you touch them if you become nobility. This one's anonymous. What are your thoughts on Brian Pigeon? Do you consider his blog to be quality literature? On second thought, maybe it would be okay if you didn't bother repeating everything after all. Look here, peasant! I've got one job on this lousy show. It's stupid, but I'm going to do it! Is that clear? Okay, okay. Anyway, Ryan... wait, who? Don't you even know that, you ignoramus? He is a great pigeon from the great land of Great Britain and the very first intellectual kalimbid. Columbid. Go look up Brian Pigeon online for the good of us all. Wow. But this blog is in English. English localization or no, I still can't read it. Of course it's in English. He lives in London. His posts may even count as fine literature. At the very least, they're culturally quite valuable. They will definitely leave a mark on avian history to come. <laughs> you said come. Wow, he must be really important. I'll have to work hard on my English so I can read his blog. Here's the last one. It's anonymous, too. It's for San. I love you. Koo! Oko-san loves you, too. Sakuya, Sakuya, I understood that. Don't act so proud, Neophyte. Well, I guess that's about it for today. Indeed, we have to cut this session short. It's almost time for the school to close. Let us make a smooth exit. Yep. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Uh, spoilers ahead. The how and why of St. Pigeonations. It's time to break out the question box. This is Kawara Ryota from Class 2-3. Last time was a little exciting, wasn't it? I'm glad we didn't get dropped. 
This time we're doing a special feature on the Bad Boys Love route. BBL, or Bad Boys Love, like I just fucking said, is an extra long truth scenario which was included with the full version of the How to Full Boyfriend game. Today we'll be answering questions about Bad Boys Love, so be warned, there will be spoilers. I don't recommend continuing with this if you haven't finished Bad Boys Love yet. Do you want to keep going? Well, yeah, we need the achievement, so... Sucks to suck. All right, let's get the... Did you just say sucks to suck? This will be a little complicated, but I think I should explain where we are before jumping into the questions. Holiday Star takes place in a happy world where the BBL route never began during winter break and the third semester. So naturally, up until now, the questions have been answered by the peaceful, undisturbed Otome route versions of each character. But because we're doing BBL this time, we'll be calling on the versions of each character who lived or didn't live through BBL. Just don't think about it too hard and you'll be fine. In the end, it's just like, it's just because unlike books or movies, visual novels have all kinds of branches and possibilities. Well, I mean, technically the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the same thing, so, huh, even if it's a little odd for me to be saying that. Sorry, that was a little long. Questions, questions. This one is from Sorawo. Was Hyoko raised in an orphanage? How has she managed everything all this time? Hyoko isn't here, so I'll be answering for her again. Her parents did die a long time ago, but she was never taken in by an orphanage. She did live with my mother and me for a while, but she decided she'd rather live on her own. That's why she lives in a fucking cave. Living by one's own strength is a hunter-gatherer's pride, after all. I could never be like her, mostly because I don't want to. She's always so tough and cool, you know? On to the next question. This one is from Damurushi. For the doctor. What did you like so much about Professor Kawara, besides his rippling muscles and massive... Sorry. What was so appealing about a good-for-nothing dove that couldn't even take care of his own family? That's what it says, doctor. Wait, wait, no, doctor, stop. You can't just tear up the letters. <laughs> He's like, only I am allowed to say bad things about Kawara. <laughs> He's like, you leave Ryuji alone. <laughs> Holy. You can't put them through the shredder either. Oh, it's completely destroyed. That is all. Ah, uh, that's not an answer, doctor. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Damarushi. I guess the subject of my father is a bit of a sensitive area with him. Dad never did come home much, though. I don't remember what kind of person he was, either. I wonder what kind of boss he was for the doctor. Hey, doctor, wait! Was there something else? The next question is for you, too. It's just this one more. Could you please stay? The contents may warrant repayment that the emergency room won't be able to fix, but very well. Are you planning to break into the third dimension to claim vengeance, Doctor? Then again, you probably could. Anyway, I'll read it, and if you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. Let's not get anyone killed. Indeed. Though I can't guarantee that we won't. This is from Tomy. About how many aliases have you had to date, Doctor? Would you mind telling me what a few of them are? I don't keep them lying around for use as party tricks. That doesn't answer the question, sir. I think it is enough. I simply use names as I need. In situations where it would be inconvenient for people to realize who I am, you see. Would revealing my names not then be quite inconvenient? That's true, but no one reading this will mind spoilers. I don't mean inconvenient for them, 
I mean inconvenient for me. I will be going now. Aw, he's gone. You didn't even answer either of them, Doctor. Looks like you're having some trouble. Oh, looks like you're having some trouble. You we are. How about I answer that question for him? You're always here just when we need you, Yuya. I have been trailing him for quite some time after all. I'll leak a little confidential information just for you. You're always ready to reveal state secrets just when we need them, Yuya. Well, that's a little harsh, isn't it? Anyway, moving right along. As all you know, his name is a member of the faculty of St. Pigeon Nations, and his name as a medical doctor is Iwamine Shu. And his name as a researcher for the Hoff Party was Issa Soma. That's the name I first knew him by. We also have evidence indicating that a Ishiki Michio, the public prosecutor who suddenly died a few years ago, might be the same person. And finally, there's a theory that his real identity is as the heir to the Ichijo group, but... That's still just a rumor. He has quite the history, doesn't he? It all seems a little excessive to me. In any case, the truth remains shrouded in darkness. Anyway, that's it for me. Yeah! Can't keep the ladies waiting after all. Adieu! Thank you, Yuya. It's a little late now, but will he be okay? The doctor was awfully insistent about hiding those names, and he just blabbed all about them. But then again, he can take care of himself. He does have a gun, after all. It's not like the doctor could kill him or anything, even if he did find out. Next letter. It's one from Sanya for Nagaki. Did you disappear entirely after BBL? Or are you living on inside Ryota? Also, what would you have done if you had never been sick? Would you have gone to college? I want to know and I can't stop crying. Nagaki will have to answer these for himself. You made me come in just a little while ago, too. Sorry, but you're a really important figure in BBL, so we need to have you here. Sonya was asking what happened to you after BBL. At the very least, we do know that I spoke to you when you woke up from hibernation. Right. Let's take another look at that scene. Oh shit! Flashbacks! Mr. Kawara. Mr. Kawara. Miss Tosaka. Can you hear me? Morning is almost here. Wake up, Kawara! Tosaka! I told you I wouldn't go back on my word. That scene appears in the special epilogue that you get to play if you go through a second time. I didn't do that. Shit. That was a pretty bad spoiler. Are you sure it's okay to show that? There might be people who have cleared BBL but still haven't seen it. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I just spoiled the streamer. I wasn't thinking. Well, uh, don't look. Don't look! It's a little late now. Anyway, as you see, my consciousness still seems to be there. So maybe I haven't disappeared completely. That's still pretty vague. I don't exactly exist to begin with. It's a little hard to imagine something that doesn't exist disappearing. But then again, part of your body is inside mine now. <clears throat> So maybe you do exist after all. Yeah, I think they put like, um, it was like a liver or a stomach from Nagaki into Ryota. Because I guess, um, Shu was trying to induce the, the H5N1 virus in Ryota. And Nagaki had it. So he like put an organ into Ryota. It was very complicated. Again, I haven't played the game for like five years. I just went through the wiki last night to remind myself. I don't know what happens after the end of BBL. Maybe I disappear later on. 
Or maybe I end up sharing Mr. Kawara's body. Maybe, if I do end up staying, I'd like to see Hitori move on and finally start living for himself. Then I could disappear. It would be nice to see Professor Nanaki living happily. He's been through so much. It wasn't all fun and games for me either, but I definitely agree. How about the second question? Also, what would you have done if you had never been sick? Would you have gone to college? I want to know when I can't stop crying. You can't stop crying? You know you can't change the past. You can't hope for a future which won't be allowed to come either. <clears throat> Didn't you think about where you wanted to go in life, Nagaki? Not really. I never had a dream for what I wanted to be when I grew up, or anything like that. If nothing had ever happened, I probably would have gone on to college, graduated, and thought about things from there. It is pretty hard to know where you'll be in a few years down the line. I haven't put any thought into my career path at all. I bet you'd make a good museum curator, or a librarian, or a writer. I've never really felt like writing books of my own. Being a curator could be interesting, though. I'll think about it. For the world where you're still alive. Yes, something like that. Is that all? Yeah, thank you, Nagaki. This last one is anonymous. It's for... Um... Hello? Is this the recording room? I keep forgetting his voice. Mr. Uzune. Please, come in, come in, have a seat. Tea and biscuits? How nice. Yes, this is very nice. Would it be alright if I brought some home? I'd like to give them to the children. Oh, yes, I think that would be fine. I'll wrap them up for you when we're done. So, like I said, this is Hitori. Hitori in the bad boys love route. Um, he, well, I mean, he's Nagaki's brother in any route. He's Nagaki's brother. And Nagaki dies because he was experimented on. And he dies when he causes a fire in the lab because he doesn't want to be experimented on anymore. Hitori kills Nanaki, the teacher. Nanaki, the crybaby teacher. Hitori bleaches his feathers and becomes Nanaki. He takes his place. Hitori is the one who has narcolepsy, who's falling asleep all the time. That's when, why when we saw the special episodes, like I said before, Hitori was the sleepy one and Nanaki was like, because he's actually very energetic. <laughs> Nanaki's very energetic. The king, and I'll say this again since Elena wasn't here when I first said it, the king, he was Nanaki. Nanaki's dead soul looking for vengeance. The original Nanaki. Um, so yeah. So he was trying to get revenge on Hitori. And Nagaki, because Nagaki was Hitori's brother. <sighs> yeah, I really need to play How to Fool Boyfriend again so I can fully understand the all of this drama. But honestly, I mean, the game has acknowledged there's many different universes, so does it really matter what's canon and what's not? Oh, I need another drink. Hold on. Oh, thank you, Mr. Starbucks. Oh, yes, I think that would be fine. I'll wrap them up for you when we're done. Really? Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. He's certainly quite talkative. It's almost hard to believe he's actually Professor Nanaki. Our last letter is addressed to you. I have a question for Hitori. You're supposed to have been good at studying, but were you able to go to school? You had your job as a lecturer after you took care of the children. It certainly doesn't seem like you'd have the time. I don't go. I'm enrolled, though. You're enrolled, but don't go? Is that, um, are you a truant? No, I'm a distance student. 
Oh, of course. Everyone helps out with the housework, so I have more than enough time left to study. Even so, I'm a little worried about leaving them for so long. If you wouldn't mind, I think I should be going soon. He's a very caring guardian, too. He's such a nice man when he's not poisoning you. My father could stand to take a leaf out of his book. <laughs> leaf. I'm a bird. Thank you so much, Hitori. Thank you for having me. It's almost like someone brought a painting of the ideal young man to life. Hard to believe he's a murderer. I wonder if I'll grow up to be as pleasant a murderer as him. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you all so much for your letters. <clears throat> Thank God I'm almost done doing this voice. Human form questions. The how and why of St. Pigeon Nations. Here's the question box. Hello again. Every birdie's favorite rock dove, Kawara Ryota from 2-3 here. First off, oh, sorry I'm burping, drank too fast. Thanks for playing all the way through story mode. That must have taken a while, it did. Make sure to take a break if your eyes are tired, okay? They're not. They're not? Oh jeez, he's responding to me. You're fine? All right, then let's go. This time we'll be doing a special feature on every birdie's human forms. As you all know, we're birds, but we have human designs too. They're just a bonus, or they're for convenience, or hentai, or something like that. So don't think about it too hard, okay? All right, our first question is from Naginata. This one is for every birdie. What color are your panties when you're in human form? Gosh, I wonder why they want to know about that. Um, I'm wearing light gray today. Let's try asking the others. Light. On this day of the reckoning, my loins are wrapped in the vestments dyed in the blood of the crimson lotus blossom. No comment. I'm wearing whatever you want me to be, baby. <laughs> I forgot to put mine on. I do not have time for this nonsense. Only Ryuji gets to know about my undergarments. Koo! Oko-san needs no panties! Maui Christmas! Miru and Kaku are always completely naked. <laughs> A lot of those weren't really answers. This next one isn't exactly about our human forms, but it fits the subject of pants. It's from Tatsu. You all wear trousers in human form, but do you wear them as birds, too? As you can see, no. Clothes for us as birds are only used for warmth, fashion, or ceremony, and aren't really mandatory at all. We just let it all hang out. Alright, next question. This one is from Imari for Professor Nanaki. I feel like you probably... Uh, this one would... We're just gonna skip this. Jesus, can we have a warning? I'm just gonna skip through this part because I don't like the fact that that question was asked at all. I'm sorry, that was pretty fucked up of me. Anyway, on to the last question. This is another one for the doctor. Maybe he gets so many because he's so mysterious? It's from Kasami. Yuya's glasses are probably just for show, but what about you, doctor? If your vision is poor, just how poor is it? Yes, Yuya's are just for show. Every so often he'll break a pair and it just doesn't bother him at all. A true super agent needs to keep six or seven pairs of fake eyeglasses around after all. Yeehaw! Oh, Yuya. The doctor left as soon as we did that question about panties. 
You know all kinds of things about him though, right? Do you not know how his eyesight is? But of course, know your enemy and know yourself, and you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. It seems to be pretty bad. If you take them away, he's practically helpless. You tried taking his glasses away? Hardly. I'm not that much of a daredevil. Merry Christmas! Miwu and Kaku took them! <laughs> I love them. I love them so much I want to adopt them. Ah, I see. It was bad enough that he started feeling pretty sick, too. They were returned promptly. Sort of like how wearing glasses that don't match your eyesight can make you dizzy. Merry Christmas! He got a wobbly. Well, we don't know the exact numbers, but it sounds like the doctor's vision is bad enough that in his human form he can't get by without his glasses. I guess that might be good to know. That's all for today. Thanks for dropping by again. The next episode will be our last one, so there will be a bonus. You'll get to see my father and Dr. Iwamine make out. Don't miss it. Da, 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 sorry, I just like that song. The how and why of St. Pigeonations. It's time for the question box. Hello, every birdie. This is Kawara Ryota from class 2-3. This is our last question answering session. We've come a long way, but it's gone by so fast. I'll be sad to see it end. Anyway, we've got a bonus question this time. Sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, first one from Suzukawa for Hyoko. You love udon, but what kind is your favorite? I'll be answering the questions for Hyoko again. I was wondering about this a while too, so I asked her. She said, if I had to pick one, it would be kake udon. It's the most basic of the basic with just udon and broth, nothing else. She said she couldn't let herself forget the true spirit of the noodle after all. She orders whatever she feels like at the cafeteria, but if it's her first time at a restaurant, she'll usually get the kake udon. I guess maybe the kake udon is the best gauge for a chef's udon powers? The next one's for Sakuya, for Tsukimu. Your mother taught you that mansions will always have ninja in them, but did she teach you anything else? But of course, she taught me all I would need to know to live in Japan. And you're always so studious, too. What kinds of things did you, do you know about, aside from ninja and shrine offerings and fallen warriors? Let's see. I know about sushi. And that's definitely a point of Japanese pride. You're an aristocrat, so you go to the really fancy sushi places, right? Indeed. I've been to those places with the little conveyor belts. Not the ones without the little conveyor belts? Do you mock me? Why should I go to a sushi place without a little conveyor belt? But My mother taught me this. Sushi places with the little conveyor belts have invested in their establishments and combine entertainment with cuisine. They are higher class than places without the little conveyor belts. Um, I see. I guess you do usually end up spending more time in the ones with the little conveyor belts. Maybe, I think. All right, next we have two for Professor Nanaki. Hmm, yes. Let's have them. The first one is from Lena Lowell. You're always falling asleep, Professor. Do you spend all your time sleeping at home, too? 
Hiyoko guessed that you spend about 97% of your time at home asleep, but how much is it really? If you're always asleep, I worry that you're not getting enough to eat. So, how much do you sleep at home, sir? Don't worry, Lino. I make sure to eat. Probably not 97% then. Mm, I do fall asleep while I'm having dinner sometimes. <laughs> and in the bath. Please make sure you don't drown yourself sleeping in the bath, sir. The next is from Shiroi. Is the dark spot by your chin a shadow, Professor? Or is it a marking? I've been wondering for a long time. We get a lot of people asking about this. Which is it, sir? It's not a shadow. It's a common marking on male <laughs> It's right where the shadow of your head would be, though, so it is a little confusing. Try searching for some pictures of button coils. You'll find plenty of coils with a marking by the beak, just like me. Thank you, sir. The next one is for you, ya. Salutations, mon ami. I'll answer anything for a lady hoping to know me better. Um, sorry, it's anonymous, so we can't really tell if it's a lady or not. Well, that's okay, because I love gentlemen, too. But clearly, it's just a shy young mademoiselle, unable to ask in person, but determined to have an answer. Well, I wonder. All right, let's just go with that. The question is, we've never seen you surrounded by squealing girls, so have you actually got it, Yuya? That's a little harsh, isn't it? Uh... -uh. Yeah, this is definitely one that would be a little hard to ask with your name attached. But asking the questions that are hard to ask is my job. You're awfully dedicated. I'll answer in full candor, too. All right, time to bite the bullet. Have you actually got it, Yuya? A man who's got it never says he does. That is true. Is that a sort of backwards way of saying you've got it? I wonder if we can call that full candor. You satisfied for now? Let me know if another lady comes calling. I do. Well, I guess for now we can just say he's probably got it. Whatever that is. Next one is for San. Koo! Never worry, never fear. Oko-san is already here. This is from someone called I Wish I Were Pudding. What kind of house do you live in, Oko-san? Koo? You are asking about Oko-san's house? Will you be coming to play? Koo! Oko-san will give you a warm welcome. And where is your house, Oko-san? Koo koo! Oko-san lives in a great mansion. A mansion? Koo! Oko-san's house is a mansion. A mansion is grand, even grander than Sakuya's. Seriously? Koo! Oko-san stays in a birdcage inside his mansion. Um, why a birdcage in the mansion? Koo! Oko-san's instincts tell him to sleep in a birdcage. Koo koo! The birdcage helps Oko-san stay calm and relaxed. Koo! Oko-san shall return to his home and relax now. Uh, well, I'm not sure I entirely understand, but I guess San lives in a birdcage inside a huge mansion. I'd like to go visit him sometime and see exactly what sort of arrangement he has. All right, time for the extra. This one's for Miss Azami. Are you here, Miss Azami? Uh, leave it to me, kid! This one's from Fusho. You are way too cool in a number of ways, Azami. I've completely fallen for you. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth and back. You want to become my protege, kid? Come to my takoyaki cart when the sun begins to set, if you've got the guts. I'll show you how to ride like the wind. 
There's a question for Mr. Rabu as well, but would you like to answer it? A question for him? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, this is from Shinkan. How is your newlywed life with Mrs. Ami so far, Mr. Rabu? She orders you around day and night, right? What kind of idiotic question is that? Don't go prying into other people's private stuff, you brat. Ow, don't kick me. Carve it into your soul, kid. No peeping into my love nest. Ah, uh, Mrs. Zami's kicks really hurt. I don't know if she orders them around or not, but I think they get along pretty well. All right, it's time for our final letter. This one is anonymous. I can't wait for the next question box series. Really? I'm so glad. Though I don't know if there will be another one. There might be, though. It's still up in the air. If there are plans for another, it'll be on the official site and blog. Check back every once in a while, okay? All right, that's it for the Holiday Star Radio section. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end. This has been the How and Why of St. Pidgeon Nations, brought to you by yours truly, Kawara Riota. Achievement Unlocked, Radio Star. Let's see, I think there's still something else that we need to get. Do, 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 do. One more. And it is get to the end of the short episode the day the night slept. After, after. How do I do that? That wasn't there before. All right. Shit's going down. This is it, guys. This is the end. This is the last thing. This story consists of unused scenes from part four. That was when we were doing the regular storyline. Please enjoy this collection of things which couldn't fit into the main story. Think of it as being like bonus scenes on a DVD. Please enter your name. Ash. Um. Sneep Snorp. Is Sneep Snorp Ash okay? Hell yeah it is. Uh, er. What's wrong, Ash? Do you have a stomach ache? The silver field was a little cold. No, that's not it. It's not that my stomach is cold. I'm just feeling kind of fuzzy. Coo! Ash is feeling fuzzy. Ash's stomach is feeling fuzzy. No, my head is. Something's bothering me. It's almost like we're in a bonus scene. It's... Um, excuse me. What? If you need the toilet, it's in that car there, so don't have an accident. No! Um, I really feel like I've seen you before. Have we met somewhere? What? Are you hitting on me? No! Maybe we've met, maybe we haven't. That depends on you. It depends on me? Could you step out of that shadow for a moment? Oh, fuck. Mr. Death. He's a friend of yours? Yeah, he and I go all the way back to the demo version. I'll be counting on you next time something happens. Try not to give me too much more work to do, okay? What? But that's why we're friends. You're friends with death? I forgot what Sakuya's voice was for a second, and that's like one of the easiest ones to do. Oh, another scene already. These are short. This in the back says... Ah... Uh... I don't know what that is. Aha. Uh huh. Huh. I wonder what that says. Oh, whatever. Um, 
The new season is almost here. I better start checking for any Hawk Party spies in the new students. Salutations, Mr. Oni. Sakazaki Yuya. What is it? I don't recall sending for you. Well, that's a little cold. Can't I just drop by to see your beautiful face? You are no longer a student at this school. You should avoid any unnatural conduct. Nothing unnatural about a college student getting nostalgic for his old high school. Everyone knows how much I love this school. Nothing suspicious about it. Anyway, I came to deliver a letter. A letter? New orders? No, it's from Nishikikoji Tori. A letter of intent? It doesn't look like it. He addressed this little package to you. Hmm. Let's have a look. To the soaring wings of Special Intelligence Division Zero, Leon J.B. May your organization grow in prosperity and success with the coming season. I pray you have been well throughout the colder months of the year. I am deeply grateful for your taking time from your busy schedule to see me off the other day. I thank you from the bottom of your heart, my heart, for your kind consideration. Therefore, I have obtained a humble gift from the High Society Seagull Department Store to express my gratitude. I know you are quite busy with the coming of the new school year, but please take care not to catch cold in this chilly spring weather. Your servant, the Black Advocate, Technical Research Consultant, Nishiki Koji Tori. That's some pretty stiff business writing. You saw him off after everything the other night? He's on the surveillance list after all. I gave him a ride home. The package? It doesn't seem to have any explosives. Madelines, cheesecake, financiers. Pretty standard stuff for a pastry assortment. Mm. Well, he did go to the trouble of having them sent. No point in saying no. We'll run some tests and if they come up clean, I'll put some coffee on. Do 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 do. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sled. Merry Christmas! Christmas will soon be here! The spring semester has barely started. Merry Christmas! Christmas will soon be here in about eight months. You two do not seem to be short on energy. Perhaps I shall reduce your portions at meals starting today. Merry Christmas! Ah! Merry Christmas! Shu just doesn't understand food. Your luxurious partridge plumage is going to get all raggedy and thin. Merry Christmas! Miru and Kaku always use up a lot of energy planning for Christmas. Merry Christmas! Let's decorate the tree with nice fossil instead of a star this year. The big nice fossil. Please don't carry my things off without asking. Merry Christmas? This is something of shoes. Something important? Something important? No, not particularly. Merry Christmas! Yay! We'll decorate the tree with it! We'll decorate the tree with it! Merry Christmas? Huh? Merry Christmas? Someone scratched stuff into this fossil. It's no good now. It's scratched? Let me see it for a moment. Merry Christmas! There's a name carved on the back! To Issa, don't forget to eat dinner. I know. Eat if you want to. Merry Christmas! Lunch! Was that from Ryuji? Hmm. Oh, um. Ah, uh, 
Stardust and cubes are so sweet. I just change his voice all the time. Um, the king! Ugh! You have some too, your majesty. Sweet foods warm the soul and make your troubles fly away. Where? Nibble. Ah, uh, I'm scared. Scared? Of what? We don't know what we'll find at the next star. But it's been true ever since we were on the Earth. No one knows what the future will bring. We don't know if it will be fun! Your Highness, Your Highness, let's have a pillow fight and talk about our crushes at the next star. Okay. Achievement unlocked. Untold stories. You can't just wait around forever. Fun is something you have to go out and find for yourself. We're all good friends here. Tomorrow will be a good day. Ah, That was How to Full Boyfriend Holiday Star. And, oh. Oh, I love Azami's human design. Kenziburo, Rabu, how nice. Aw. Aw, thanks for playing. Let's see the credits. Um, I know there's a way to see them. Credits. Yay! We did it! Da, 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 da. Dun 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 So I think some of these parts of this game, it seemed like, were probably released in individual pieces and then put together. Because that's what it seemed like. <laughs> Pigeonblog.wordpress.com Is that a real site? I wonder. I mean, if it's getting a special thanks, it must be real. Man, there were a lot of people who worked on this game, too. I mean, it's bigger than the original How to Fool Boyfriend game, and it had a lot of great art, so... It makes sense that there's more people who worked on it. But I'm just surprised. I didn't think it would be this many people that worked on How to Fool Boyfriend. Do, 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 do. I remember when this game first came out, people, like, lost their mind. Not Holiday Star, but How to Fool Boyfriend. When it first came out... People, like, lost their minds. Oh, that was so exciting. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, so, yeah, we are completely done with all the achievements. How about that? Feels good to have a game when I get everything done for once and don't have, like, something left over. Um, it's not too late yet. We could play something else. Just for a little bit. Um... Let me see what I'm feeling. Can we, can we like shut the music off, please? It's a, okay. I had to pick the creepiest one possible. Just gonna turn this down a little bit. Okay. So let's see. What would we be interested in? Da 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 da. Um, I think, well, we could check and see if Headliner 2 will actually work 
for streaming. And we could go for a little longer. We could go until like nine. Um, we could also do... I'm looking at what I've got on my list. Game Dev Studio could be fun for a little short bit. Oh, we could do... Oh, that's probably going to be a lot of reading, though. Do, 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 do. I love this song. I've spent a lot of time just listening to it in the background. Well, you know what? I'm going to see if I can get a uh, headliner working. If I can get it working, we will play that for a little bit. If not, I will be back for maybe 30, 40 minutes of Game Dev Studio. Just because I don't feel like I want to stop right now. I was expecting that we were going to fully go till 9 um, and have a lot of this game, but it went faster than I thought. So sit tight and I will be live uh, back in a few minutes. <laughs> 